I want to begin by dedicating my teaching this morning to Mort and Lorraine Schrag. Once again, the subject matter lines up perfectly with the celebration of a wedding anniversary of this magnitude. Uh, I stand here on behalf of the entire congregation saying Mazal Tov, and um, may you enjoy many, many more years together. And may we celebrate them here on this bima as a community together. This week we turn to the fourth chapter of Tomer Devora. For those of us who are new to this book, this is the foundational, one of the foundational Kabbalistic texts written by Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, 16th century Sfat. He believes in systematizing the Kabbalah that's kind of floating in the world at that point. And we turn to this fourth chapter, and what is amazing is I know from the YouTube channel that the, the previous three teachings are available on our YouTube channel. I know that people are listening to them, and I know people are sending me questions during the week, so it's great that this is making um, uh, people think and people are reflecting on it. I really appreciate your attention to the book. Chapter 4, Rabbi Cordovero began by addressing humility, wisdom, and now he turns to the matter of bina, of understanding. What is lost in translation of any language is the nuance of that language. So in Hebrew, there are many words like bina and chesed that'll come up here in this book that in English might seem like the same word. Bina and chesed might seem like understanding, compassion, empathy. In English, we have a bunch of words that fill that bucket. But in Hebrew, it is more specific, and I hope I do a, an adequate job of conveying bina. How should a person accustom himself or herself with the attribute of bina, of understanding? Now, you remember, Kabbalistically, wisdom is the father of the divine attributes. Bina is the mother of the divine attributes. This means to return in repentance, for there is nothing as important as it in that it rectifies every flaw. Now I have to call out the student of the week is Anita Melnick, who walked into the sanctuary this morning saying, I just read chapter four preparing for the teaching this morning, and how does Rabbi Cordovero move so quickly between the word understanding and the word, repentance. Read it one, let's read it together one more time. Bina, understanding, means to return in repentance. And we often don't associate these two ideas together. That it takes understanding, it takes empathy, to even offer somebody the opportunity to repent. If we were just wise and judgmental, when somebody's wrong, they're wrong. And that's it. But the idea of Bina, the idea that it encapsulates repentance, understanding, love, as we'll see chesed is so multifaceted next week, the idea that it is the mother of the divine attributes that battles with wisdom and judgmentalism to make sure that people are given a second chance. I can hear Blair's voice in my head as I say this. To make sure that children are given a second chance when they make a mistake. To make sure that people are given a second chance when we make mistakes. That is the lesson of Bina. Now, down below, I'm going to skip now to page 49. Four lines from the top. A proof of this concept is Cain himself of the band Cain and Abel, right? Cain himself was evil and was a derivative of the evil serpent. Okay, that, we'll skip that for now. He was told, if you better yourself, you will be uplifted. Now, if everybody could open their chumash, because I had to do this this morning, open your chumash to page 24, which is chapter 4 of Breshit. I say this all the time, but if you just learn Breshit, you will understand the entire Jewish tradition. Dare I say, it's like a roadmap for humanity. So chapter 4 on page 24 begins, Ve'adam yada et chava ishto. 
And the man, or an Adam, knew his wife in the biblical sense, right? He knew his wife. So it's nice the chapter begins with a, with a hook like that, right? And she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I've gained a male. Okay, then she bore a brother, Abel. Something interesting happens here that I didn't notice until this week. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to God from the fruit of the soil. Cain is a, is a farmer. And Abel, for his part, brought the choicest of the firstlings of his flock. Abel is a shepherd. And the one thing we can know from the Jewish tradition is that God loves the smell of meat, right? We are like the, the, we're the, we're the, we're the people of baseball or NASCAR, or we, we like to tailgate and grill and holy occasions, all right? We're not, uh, we're not tennis and golf, fan, uh, golf people. We're, we, we love the idea of grilling. We did it in the Holy Temple. We do it, this is the first story about two brothers who offer up offerings. God paid heed to Abel and his offering of meat, but to Cain and his offering, God paid no heed. Cain was much distressed and he fell on his face. He was upset and he threw a tantrum, like all of us do, whether it be on the inside or on the outside. And God says to Cain, why are you distressed? Why have you fallen on your face? Surely if you do right, you can uplift yourself. But if you don't do right, sin couches at the door. Its urge is towards you. You can be its master. How many people remember this warning from God in the story between Cain and Abel? God wants Cain to be a better person. God wants Cain to be a better brother. And this is the proof text that Rabbi Cordovero brings in Tomer Devora to say, God God's self steps into the picture to try to fix this relationship through Bina, through understanding. God understands what is making Cain feel this way, and God is saying, you're better than this. I know you. You're better than this. Lift your head up off the ground. Does Cain do it? We know no. We know that, it's, we know that Cain doesn't do it. Cain actually murders his brother. And I hope and pray none of us are in relationships like Cain and Abel. But each of us have challenges with siblings. Each of us. I don't know all of our siblings in the room, and I can promise you each of us have challenges with siblings. Each of us have challenges with coworkers. Each of us have challenges with neighbors and friends, even our best friends. Dare I say, even our family. And sometimes it takes a moment, even if the person brings an offering that you don't like, to stop and step back and say, I understand what you were trying to do, and I hope you understand why I didn't like it, and I hope our next time together, we can make it better. And in that way, it's not only understanding, it's repentance, it's tshuva. And in this way of understanding this attribute, I want to offer two ideas that struck me this week. First of all, Adam and Eve disappear from the story completely. God is the parent, wanting Cain to become the better version of Cain's self. Just like God is each of our parents, wanting us to become the better version of ourselves, especially during this time of year, leading up to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So instead of talking to our siblings or talking to our coworkers and worrying about some kind of authority, like a parent or a boss or a coworker overhearing, I want each of us to imagine what Rabbi Cordovero wants us to understand through this text, and that is that it's not the parent that's the authority in our life, or the boss that's the authority in our life that should determine how we behave in this world. We should all strive to have a bigger boss and a bigger parent that actually makes each and every one of us a sibling, that makes each and every one of us a coworker in making the world a better place. 
And when we understand this version of Bina, when we understand the way that God brings understanding and tshuva into the world, we understand the last paragraph on page 50. This is the elevated level of repentance with which a person should conduct themselves. Every day, he or she should contemplate this and repent in some way so that all of our days will be, in fact, spent in repentance. And I would argue that it's difficult for any of us to do real tshuva ever. How many people in this room actually use next month and make a list of people that they should call on the phone and say they're sorry to? I would say it's probably less than we would want. <laughs> but we should imagine a world, we should imagine a world where every day is Elul, where every day we want to become the better version of ourselves, where we imagine God telling us, lift your face up off the ground. I know you can do better than this. And it's when we hear that, each and every morning when we wake up, we should also hear the promise that unlike other religions, we don't think this is some kind of fallen kingdom. Because each and every morning when the sun comes up, it presents us with another opportunity of promise, another possibility that this will in fact be the day that I will become the person that God had always wanted. Shabbat Shalom.